I am hiking up to work on the cabin and it's very hot. It's very, very muggy today. I have decided to stop and have a seat on the bench that I made. <laughs> I made this bench, was it last year? Maybe it was the year before, I don't remember. Anyway, it was just a bunch of leftover pressure treated boards. So I built it down at the cabin and then I took it apart and carried it up in three sections, I guess. Yeah, so three trips up and down. I think in total it took me probably three hours going up and down and then putting this together and then getting back down. But um, yeah, it's at like this perfect, perfect little spot. Nice little clearing and it's kind of flat right here. So it's a perfect spot to take a little break. So I'm just letting the sweat dry off my back. Because <laughs> I'm sweating a disgusting mess. And then uh, I'm going to have a drink and then I'll carry on and I'll see you up top. And actually, okay, so where I'm sitting, right across from there is... Uh, that is where I did the freehand chainsaw milling video. And that is also going to be a location where I build a cabin kind of similarly to what I'm doing up at the cliff. It's like a really, it's like a habitable, it's flat, it's beautiful and you get the most beautiful view of the lake. You get 180 degree view of the lake. You're lower down than the ca than where the cabin on the cliff is but you get more view of the lake. It's uh, stunning really and I have actually quite a few plans for some fun things there. And you might wonder why I didn't start building there first. And that is because that location is like in the middle of the mountain. So it's the most difficult to get to from either up top or down below. So I thought, why not do the cabin on the cliff first and then work my way to this one. Steve and I logged that area probably in 20, I don't know, 2016 or 2017, we felled all the trees to open it up and expose the view. So that's gonna be something that's gonna happen in you know probably a year or two down the road, hopefully. So maybe if I still have a YouTube channel, I'll show you guys along for that one too. Okay, hello. Welcome back. So I've just been working away on the back uh, gable end rough window framing, rough window opening framing. So I would sort of had a little bit of a hard time deciding on that window situation. It honestly felt a little bit small for the space. The last time I was out here, I was kind of like, is it too small? Um, I didn't really have any option to go bigger. All of the windows that were available that this girl sells in her shop are about the same size, other than one that was quite like big and rectangular shaped, not square shaped. And I thought that this because, and I thought that because this cabin is a 10 by 10, rather than say, for example, eight by 12, eight feet by 12 feet, that I should stick with a square type window back there. Um, so, and then I also just had a, I was having a hard time wrapping my brain around how I was going to close it in and protect it and then frame the outside. So going back, originally I had brought timbers to accommodate a window for the gable end that um, I got for free and that's what I was gonna use and then the stained glass window idea came up. So. Long story short, what I had thought of is why don't I see if it looks okay to 
put the little stained glass window within that other window that measures on the outside 29 inches by 29 inches. So I did that. I ran it by my friend Dale who was the one that was going to help me do the window, the stained glass window to begin with. And he's like, yeah, I think it's not a bad idea. And it kind of solves a lot of my problems. Time, like efficiency. It also keeps that window opening bigger, which will allow more light. And it solves the problem of trying to figure out a way to case in that stained glass window so that it's protected from the outside elements. And so that's what I'm going to do. a lot done since I was last here. Uh, I'm sorry. Do I know you? It's me. My name is Sean. I'm the building inspector here. Hmm. Okay, so one anchor bolt here and two, two you said, and the ones in the front? Per absolutely perfect. Perfect. Couldn't have done it better myself. Oh, that's right. I guess we probably haven't seen one another since my transition. Sean, Shauna, Sean to Shauna. Just add an A on the end. That was like the easiest part of this transition. Oh, okay. And I just had my final surgery. What do you think? Really? Yeah, I mean, you look great. You look great. Yeah, I'm really impressed with how everything came out. I'm just still not quite pleased with my voice, but we'll get there. I came here to inspect. Let's inspect. That is a perfect plum. Now let's check for square. Ooh. Perfect. Perfectly square. That is building inspector approved. Thanks. 
I'd say you're ready to carry on. Toodles. Bye. So the front ridge pull is five feet, so I just need to figure out what the difference is. I suppose when in doubt, I can always just add a shim here or there, because that's what shims are for in good times. In bad times, I'll help you out whenever I can. Cause that's what shims are for. Da 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 what shims are for. Anyone know that song? That's what friends are for? <laughs> That's what friends are for. In good times. In bad times. I'll be on your side forevermore. I cannot sing clearly, but you know what I mean. My sister and I used to sing each other that song at night. We used to share a room. My sister's three years older than me. We used to love that song and we used to sing that song together at night before we went to sleep. I think I have to change this ladder. These in my pocket. <sighs> These are a really good pair of work shorts. I have pockets to put things in. I'm gonna trim this bottom on this thing. It's got a bit of a lip, a bit of a shelf. No, it's uneven. Cause that's what shims are for. You'd have to know the song to know the song. Of course, all the freaking shimming I gotta do is always, always at the front. Perfect. Enough, I says. Now I'm gonna try and get this beam up. <sighs> this should be fun.
board up and hoist it on the, the sideboard temporarily. Found something. I'll just use this. It's a little over two feet. This is the hard part is getting it positioned, not getting it up. Okay, I gotta start over. I'm gonna try and get it in its position better first. up there roughly positioned I just have to go around with the level and make sure things are plumb and all that I'm sweating doing the roof is gonna be interesting I'll say that Oh my gosh, it's like good. So because I can't, I don't have the leverage to get up there and hammer nails in from the top. I think what I'm going to do is just tack screws in just to hold it there. And then once I start the rafters and I'm able to get up there a bit safer, like set myself up with something, then I'll go down. Then I will go up and secure them fully and properly that way. I just don't feel safe. I don't think, I can't think of a way that I could do it safely right now. So I think I'm just gonna go around and tack screws into everything. I still need to put a lag bolt in the uh, window thing right there. And yeah, there, that part's done, mostly. Call that done for now. I did want to talk about a little bit about the future of this cabin build um, because just in case some people are wondering like last year I stopped working on it for the winter time because 
I didn't feel comfortable putting up a timber frame by myself in bad weather, like cold. I didn't have anywhere to escape to. There could be like ice and snow. So I, that's why I aborted things in the fall. Plus the dogs were so busy last year. I talked about that in the video. Um, this year things are different. Of course we still have, we have five dogs again, but everyone is just a little bit more settled. Clyde has been such, he's such a different dog in terms of the fact that he can find his way home now. Like last year, Clyde could never find his way home and we had to go looking for him like every day. I'm, I'm not even kidding, it was so stressful. But for whatever reason, he has a routine now. He goes out in the morning and not even every morning now, but he just does his thing. We put the collar on him just in case, but he goes around and he goes into all the same places he used to last year. Um, far away, like sometimes almost two miles away from home, but he comes home and he never did that last year. So that's such a, I'm just so, I'm, I'm so proud of him, <laughs> a proud mom. Um, so that's different. That aside, I have a shed and I am hoping that I can get this cabin to a point, like I want to at least get the roof on before the snow, which I think is reasonable. Um, I now just am moving on to the rafters and the roof boards and then, you know, I should be able to get the roof on and maybe a, some of the walls, partially anyway, get a wood stove going and my plan is to come and work on this over the winter and this is going to kind of be my winter project. As long as I can drive out here and get to the top of the trail, um, I don't see there being a problem. You know, it's going to be no different than I started coming out to work in the shed in, it was January. I want to say it was the end of January, if not early February. So yeah, I just, uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that in case some people are kind of feeling like I'm not going to work on it over the winter again. I'm, I'm going to work on it over the winter. I think it would be fun. And I've decided I am going to insulate it. Not heavily. I'm going to throw like one inch of insulation around it, but because I kind of anticipate this cabin more than somewhere I come in the summertime because summer down at the lake, like down at the main cabin down there is just so nice to be able to swim. I kind of foresee this cabin being somewhere to come to in the off season. So that for that reason, I'm gonna throw insulation in when I was kind of not sure if I was gonna do anything. There's another update. I think that was it, yeah. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. Um, that way I don't feel so rushed to get things done before the snow comes because to be honest, I have so many things on my list to do. Like the cabin needs to be stained. I just have so many things I need to do with such a limited amount of time that I kind of have to, I have to tend to some of those other things. So that just relieves a bit of pressure off my back as well to know that I can just pick away at this over the winter, as long as I can get it to a certain point before, and I get a lot of milling done before the snow comes. So, yeah. Plus I need a little outhouse, so I'm probably gonna build a little outhouse over the winter. No? Yeah, anyway, that's it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you guys are my friends. We can just sit here and talk, and that's what friends are for. And I can sing to you some more. Don't you want to hear me sing? It's really nice. Okay, that is it. I will see you in the next video. And thanks for watching. How should I do her hair? Braids maybe. I don't have a mirror.
Now you do. Papa Bear, this is Goldilocks. Do you read me? Over. This is Goldilocks. You mean it's Papa Bear? Papa Bear, over. <laughs> Skit is done. Goldilocks is about to head down. Over and out. 10-4, good buddy. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>